Last House on the Left Released in 1972, The Last House on the Left caused a major controversy all over the world. Written and directed by the late great master of horror Wes Craven, the movie was the first of what would become of Craven's illustrious career. At the time of filming, no one knew the extent of how well it would do in the movie going world. Craven wanted to make the movie in a documentary style, like the news reports coming out of Vietnam at the time. The movie was controversial for its content, but was also very controversial for the onset treatment towards actress Sandra Peabody, who played Marie. So let's see, what the fuck happened to The Last House on the Left? The Last House on the Left started as an idea between Wes Craven and Sean Cunningham, the man who would go on to make the extremely popular Friday the 13th franchise. Why are they editing Cunningham's Together movie? Hallmark releasing considered the movie a hit and gave Craven and Cunningham $90,000 to make a horror movie. Originally, the movie was going to be full on, gritty and hardcore, with the actors all agreeing upon it. However, during filming, Craven decided to make it a softer movie and rewrote the script accordingly. This version of the script, titled Night of Vengeance, has never been available or seen anywhere. Craven envisioned the movie to have violence which was less glamorised, such as the westerns and action movies of the time. The actors portraying the villains, David Hess, Fred Lincoln, Jeremy Rain and Mark Scheffler, all tried to be method on set, to get in the right frame of mind and also get the right reaction from the two female leads of Sandra Peabody and Lucy Grantham. Sandra Peabody almost walked away from the movie after one scene went a little too far. Due to the nature of the violence and the scenes which violence was created in, Peabody didn't have to get into character that often. In an interview, Peabody stated that she was genuinely upset during the more violent scenes as she felt unprepared. I was upset because I'm an emotional person, and I reacted to what was going on as if it was real. I had a real hard time with some of the scenes, because I had come out of American Playhouse, where it was all about preparation, and I felt like I should have channeled that, but I couldn't. I was a very young actress, and I was still learning to balance any emotions I had from the outside of the film into my scene work. David Hess and the rest of the cast have said that they all bonded during filming, but Peabody was left out and treated differently from the rest of the cast. Peabody also thought that David Hess was in fact a real killer due to him going method and chasing her long after filming had finished for the day. The majority of the controversial onset drama was during the first half of the movie, when Peabody and Grantham were being chased and brought down. The remaining of the film, where the three villains turned up at Peabody's home, went well. The movie went through numerous title changes. As we mentioned, Night of Vengeance was the original title, which was then changed to Sex Crime of the Century by the investors. It was then changed to Krug and Company, to which this was a terrible title that had little draw on test screenings. It was then decided that the title would be The Last House on the Left. The movie was shipped out to various movie theatres across the states, to which the controversy grew louder than ever before. The movie was deemed too graphic and critics found it too disturbing to even finish. However, an unexpected ally came to the rescue of the movie. Roger Ebert, perhaps the most well-known movie critic in the history of film, gave the movie three and a half stars out of four. He said the movie was four times as good than you'd expect it to be. Ebert's close friend and critic colleague Gene Siskel said, The movie celebrates violent acts by males, which is the exact opposite to what Craven put on screen and actually cements what he said to be true of the western and action movies of that time that glamorises violence and its vigilante heroes. Movies back in the 70s were always leased to theatres at different times, there was no wide releases like this day and age. When the reels came back to Craven and Cunningham, they would have to re-edit scenes back into the movie as theatre owners would edit the movie themselves to remove the more extreme violence and sexual content. 
This made the movie more intriguing to people who hadn't seen it, as word of mouth containing people fainting, vomiting, and even having heart attacks while watching the movie made this movie a must-see for horror fans. When the movie was given to the MPAA, it was handed back with a dreaded X rating. Craven wanted an R rating for wider release, so he cut the movie down by several minutes of footage, all extreme scenes. However, this still wasn't good enough for the ratings board, who slapped it with another X rating. Craven handed the movie to the board no less than three times. All came back with the X rating. In order for the movie to have a wider release, Craven put all of the cut footage back into the movie and got his friend at the ratings board to give it an R rating, which Craven then released. The movie had a very hard time in countries around the world. A misconception of the movie being banned in Australia is always mentioned when talking about it. In fact, the movie was never banned on its initial release in the land down under. It just wasn't submitted for a rating as they knew that it would need to be censored. The movie was submitted in 1987 for a VHS release, but was rejected. In 1991, the movie was part of a package that contained 15 movies that were all part of the rejected and banned list. The movie was finally released in 2004 uncut. Here in the UK, the movie had a terrible deal. It was submitted to the BBFC for cinema approval in 1974, but was rejected from the get-go. The movie was released on VHS in the early 80s, as video did not need the required BBFC rating certification. This version was the complete full uncut version, missing only a comedic scene between the two police officers. However, the rise of video and the growing number of gory horror movies that came the video nasties era. The movie was banned in 1984 for home video, where it remained until the full, uncut version was finally granted a certificate in 2008. The movie was granted an 18 rating in 2002 and released the following year, but with 31 seconds of cuts. The distributor was able to put the cut scenes onto the actual DVD disc as a slideshow with a web link to view the video footage online. The Last House on the Left is one of the most important horror films to ever be made. Along with Night of the Living Dead, Last House made horror more visceral, more gory and upsetting. Horror movies before these used to be the monster movies, your Frankensteins, Draculas, the thing from outer space. These movies were glossy, had the Hollywood appeal and grandeur, while Last House on the Left felt real. It felt like it could be you or your friends upon the screen, being tormented, being killed. This was the way of the future for horror, and the 70s went hell for leather for it. A slew of movies came out in the wake of Last House. Movies with very similar titles, plot, and even using the same actors. You had The House on the Edge of the Park, Last House on Dead End Street, and you even had movies which had no association with The Last House on the Left, being labelled as sequels to Craven's original work. The New Age was upon us. Horror became the grit and bloody landscape with a slew of exploitation movies being released by the dozen. Each week there was a new movie with a similar plot point and violence. These movies were cheap and easy to finance and they made profit. The Last House on the Left has continued to be controversial throughout the last five decades, to which it is constantly being brought up in conversations for the importance of horror. In 2009, the movie was remade and made its budget back at the box office, with some critics calling it a better movie, while some called it what the critics of 73 said, a violent movie that glorifies violence. <laughs>